Hello, I am Yogi Nisunita and this is Meditation, Yoga and Stuff podcast. I believe my dharma or my life's purpose is to share my understanding of meditation, yoga and Ayurveda, holistic healing science of India. I make these amazing wisdoms accessible and adaptable for present time. So let's start. Hello and welcome to the podcast. Today I'm discussing about happiness. So what is happiness in your mind? What comes in your mind when I say happiness? And if I take answer from you, we all may have different answers for what is happiness. It could be just joy of day-to-day life. It could be joy of uh, playing with your kids or uh, playing with your pet, or it could be joy of going for a nice job. It could be anything um, which uh, gives you that glimpse of happiness. And that's what we um, start uh, talking about uh, concept of happiness. And what happens that sometimes we um, chase this happiness, we think that, you know, money might bring the happiness or we might think that, you know, oh, when I have that red Ferrari, I will get the happiness. Um, And when I actually achieve these things, there is still emptiness there. And this, um, uh, you may hear it in a lot of uh, sometimes celebrity interviews and things like that, that uh, when they reach their goal, um, there is still emptiness there. And this is where we uh, talk about, we connect with the understanding of uh, wisdom of yoga, where uh, yoga talks about sukha, uh, which is, can be happiness and ananda, and ananda is a deep state of uh, happiness. And so these are two, two different things according to wisdom of yoga. So Sukha is um, Kshanabhangur, that means Sukha means it it's, uh, lasts for just few moments. Uh, it is a beautiful state, it gives us the joy, but it lasts uh, just a little while. Whereas when we uh, reach to the tr- true state of our happiness, Ananda, this is the state where there is a deep stillness. There is a deep happiness which lasts forever. And um, this is what yogis realize through their uh, meditation that they can reach to these states as, uh, sometimes spontaneously and sometimes with a practice, a steady practice. Uh, this is where... Um, we try to tune into what is true happiness. And the when we are um, achieving these goals of um, uh, which we think that, you know, are important material goals or um, uh, the simple joys uh, we uh, find in our life, we get a glimpse of this deep ananda state. But can we hold on to this state? This is where we have to let go of a lot of clutter um, from our mind. And uh, and we're using the word clutter, which may feel like, oh, what is she talking about? So what happens that we cram our mind with a lot of unnecessary information, unnecessary things happening, our experiences, and So there is hardly any stillness and true happiness come with the stillness. Uh, And this is is the reason why we need to have practices which will give us uh, the joy, that connection with our uh, inner self, our inner guru, our true stillness. Now, when we start meditating um, or doing the practices which invoke this stillness, uh, we feel very uh, connected to these practices. Or sometimes it may happen that um, people may feel scared about these practices initially because they have never experienced this. I'll tell you an example. 
um, I used to run meditation class um, and um, oh, one of my uh, clients, she brought her husband with her, literally dragged him. It was on Sunday mornings and we were sitting in meditation, beautiful atmosphere. Um, we were in the place what we used to call a tree house, um, beautiful location, peaceful, no sound other than the birds and, you know, wind and things like that. A beautiful, beautiful location. And we were sitting in meditation and uh, obviously the stillness of the place, uh, regular meditation in that place created that grounding, that atmosphere where this person, um, my client's husband, first time experienced the peace and stillness. And after the meditation, he just sat there and said, are you okay? He said, oh my God, what you did to me, what's happening? And uh, so it was, there was a fear around it. So we had a nice chat and I explained to him that this is the stillness you have experienced and uh, it, it is um, nothing to be afraid of, you know, and this is where um, the stillness of mind uh, can give us so much, you know. He became a regular meditator after that, even now he practices uh, on his own. So first time I understand that if you're experiencing maybe this first time, the stillness, it could be baffling, it could be scary, but don't be afraid. Unless you feel like literally like I don't want to be here, then, then it's understandable. Um, we also need to understand that meditation is not for everyone. Um, if you are into dire state of mind, if you have a mental um, a health condition, things like that, I suggest you take advice from your um, uh, from your uh, psychiatrist or things like that, and then only meditate, follow the practices according to their suggestions. Um, nowadays, we have beautiful podcasts, uh, we have beautiful apps and things like that where we can do the meditation practices. Uh, guided meditation is really amazing to just ease our mind into this happiness, this state of stillness and through that happiness. Now, what does guided meditation do is it, it gives our mind something to follow. So it's not that scary then, you know, so that's why and some guided meditation apps have beautiful voices there. So you can, you know, um, connect with those also that energy behind that voices and you can follow that. You can go on my website. There are four uh, meditations you can download. Uh, my website is sunitayoga.com. Feel free to download their free audio meditations and they're just 10 to 12 minutes so they're not very long. Now happiness, let's come back to today's topic, happiness. Um, just like stress, stress can give us different symptoms. Everyone has different symptoms uh, of stress. So for example, if someone is going through a lot of stress, what their reaction will be different. There could be physical reaction, there could be mental reaction, there could be both. Um, and nowadays, the, uh, the whole world is going through a lot of stress. There are a lot of uh, social unrest happening. And this is all create, uh, there is a lot of uh, uneasiness uh, in the mind then uh, with the uh, pandemic situation and, and things like that. Uh, you know, it's really gives our mind a lot of worries. And this is again, when we start noticing uh, uh, where our energy is going, you know, uh, we start noticing that these things are happening around us. We cannot ignore them. We notice we, they are happening. So that's the truth. We acknowledge that. And we start noticing that what can I do about it? You know, um, is there anything in my hands? And if yes, then go ahead and do it. But a lot of time there are not of, a lot of these things are not in our hands. So we then had to take a step back and start thinking really, what is the point of worrying here? 
Um, the wisdom of yoga calls this all um, mind going into unnecessary worries about things. Is uh, it's called Maya. Uh, we go into the illusion, illusion of all this is you know tension we take and stress we create, and my mind goes into this negative loop. It is said that we have almost 80 to 90,000 thoughts per day. Out of that, 80,000 thoughts are repeated. So a lot of repetition of the thought. And what happens that when we, re we are repeating these thoughts, we, um, the more we'll repeat, the more neurological grooves we'll cre create in our brain because they will go deeper and deeper because the regularity of those thoughts is going to, that's going to happen. So we're creating these almost like uh, deep grooves and we kind of like it thinks that that's what our mind is, that's what we are. And the truth of matter is that's not true. Uh, these again, uh, we, our mind has created this situation, worries about this situation. A lot of time, um, we, we just worry about it. The situation may itself get re resolved. Now, the question arises, how do we deal with it? And this is where uh, the stillness practices uh, can uh, help us to realize that a lot of this is just illusion this illusion that is our mind creating, the story is mind weaving. So when we are into stillness, we start realizing what is it truly important to us? What is it really, really matters? And um, so for example, if you are torn between career and family and you know money and family and whom should you pay attention go to into stillness and you will find answer. Uh, for me, the answer was family. It was very important for me. And I took a step towards that. And when the time is right, you will notice that the, the career will also full, uh, fulfill its joyous thing. So what is important to you will become clear through your stillness practices, just few minutes of stillness. As I was explaining, we have so many thoughts every day. And if these thoughts are in, into this loop of repetition, and if this loop is negative repetition, what's going to happen is that we are creating then the negative energy cycle around us in our thoughts around us, in our relationships as well. So how can we stop this is, as I said, like stillness practices and uh, what it does, it, it, it almost uh, brings us intervention. It, it brings that intervention into this loop of thought. And you, you will say that, oh, just two minutes or five minutes or 10 minutes practices, what they are going to do. But just that intervention of one thought injecting into your, say, for example, 90 negative thoughts, one thought interjecting today, this is also going in loop. Tomorrow, when you repeat it, it's going to be multiplying and multiplying and multiplying. So every day when you do meditation practice, just for a few minutes, that's what's happening. You are slowly, steadily inter interjecting the positive thoughts there. And uh, the, uh, these uh, stillness practices then gives you opportunity to find out what brings you towards that true happiness, what really matters to you and not what society is uh, putting forward as um, happiness is. You know, um, you switch on any screen and uh, ideas of happiness is flung in your face. But is that your true happiness? And a lot of time your true happiness may be just being uh, peaceful with your family, friends, or going for nature walk and things like that. 
So what is your true happiness coming back to that? And when you start noticing that, okay, this is important to me and this is where what I will work towards, um, you're slowly and steadily creating a, a, a loop of positive thoughts. And slowly and steadily you realize that you have already created this massive um, a reservoir of positive things happening. And this is creating the true happiness. This true, true happiness and stillness is very powerful. Uh, it is very, very deep. Uh, this feeling of a uh, sensation of true happiness, especially uh, when you're doing the practices which are right. When I am doing the correct asana practice or physical yoga movement practice for myself, I realize that I feel at home. Similarly, when I am doing the correct uh, meditation practices, uh, regular meditation practices, I feel so much connection with myself. I feel happy. So this is what we are trying to move towards, the finding that, you know, what is it making me, giving me true happiness? It is, is it long lasting, the state of mind? Now we living, we are not enlightened being, we're living in this modern world. So obviously we are going to be affected by what's happening around us. Um, you may ask like what in this situation, say for example, uh, if war is going on there or COVID, how this uh, meditation is going to help? What is this going to do? It is believed in wisdom of yoga that when one person meditate, 10 person, ara 10 person around this uh, meditating person gets also get benefit of that. So you, the energy you create, the positive energy you create, has, you create have a ripple effect. So believe uh, that the meditation practice you're doing, it is not just for yourself, but also for others as well. So 10 people around you are going to get benefit of that. And imagine every person start meditating, how much uh, stillness and happiness we can create. We all have capacity to do that. So this is my suggestion for happiness. Come back to find out what is it that really, really is true meaning of happiness for you. What is happiness for you? And you can even meditate on just this question and you will find that, you know, the answers uh, will be clear. Now with meditation, uh, it doesn't work like like that, you know, just click and then answers are there. We need a lot of patience, a lot of compassion towards ourself. It is self-healing journey. This self-healing journey of moving towards our true self, our true stillness. So I suggest that come back to your true, um, true self and you will find that there is stillness there, there is joy, there is true happiness there. Um, there was an article in Time magazine long time ago, The Happiest Man on Earth, where they um, measured the, uh, a Buddhist monk uh, who has been meditating for 30 years. He uh, was, I think, French descent, if I'm not mistaken. And he was Buddhist monk and he meditated uh, all his life, 30 years. And uh, because he was neuro uh, scientist, he allowed to scan his brain. And they realized that the happiness uh, when he's in the state of meditation, even in that, uh, the whole scanning, scanning machine, he was able to get, go in the state of meditation um, on command. And he um, also was able to hold the state of meditation there. And he's uh, the center of happiness in his brain was uh, literally lit up uh, when he was in state of meditation. 
So that is true meditation. He was called happiest man on earth. Um, and he reached to this state through the state of meditation. Now your goal, or my goal may not be to become the Buddhist monk uh, and meditate, um, you know, for a year, for days and days, but at least few moments of stillness is achievable. And we can do that. We can give that gift to ourselves. So let's uh, start meditating regularly. Um, I meditate every day in the morning and in the evening. When I wasn't well, I still continued meditating. Uh, and it is the only uh, sure thing in, in my life. Uh, you know, the things happen, it's like a rock of my life. So I truly believe that the true happiness is there within us. We can, all we need to do is uh, reach within and connect with that. I hope that this um, podcast on happiness gives give you some glimpse of what is uh, happiness and hopefully help you encourage your meditation practice. I also do mentoring sessions, so feel free to connect with me. I, I give a personal meditation, tailor-made meditation practice just for your needs. So feel free to connect with me through my website. Um, and um, I hope that you enjoyed this podcast. Thank you for being here um, and see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you for tuning in. I really appreciate that, that you're taking this time out of your day. Don't forget to subscribe. Take care. Bye for now.